read the Bible in the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And the Word of God says to us, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Glory be to Jesus. Let us look to the mark of the beast. What we're going to have a look at tonight is to explain the barcode. Why is the barcode uh, more or less in regards to the, or tied into, you could say, the 666 with the, with the microchip? Why is it tied into that? Because that's another question too. Oh, is the vaccine the microchip? Or is the vaccine the mark of the beast, the 666? So, when we're looking at, brethren, in regards to, let's just go to the first picture, the one that we had and that we've been looking at. So this one was the one we saw and we've been seeing because everything leads to this. And when we saw the studies about the microchip, the mark of the beast, at the very beginning of the, the first study I mentioned that, you know, it's, it's pretty much uh, hidden away in the barcode system. Now, you don't actually see 666 there in the barcode system. You see it down there, you know, obviously it's been put there, but that's just to, and, and you can see the, the two stripes on the left, the middle, and on the right. And that's just to indicate to you that that's where it's actually hidden. But tonight, we're going to look in a little bit in regards to explaining how the barcode systems work. And uh, to be able to explain that, we'll be able to enlighten us a little bit as to understand how to point it out and how to then explain it. Because one thing is you knowing about it, but the other thing is, do you know how to explain them? Do, you, do we understand it? Because one thing is, yeah, I know about it, but I don't understand it. You see, but when we can know and understand, it's more effective because when we understand, we know how it works and we can then explain it to somebody else. And that's more effective than just one knowing. So, when we are looking at this, I do want to make a correction on something that I said on the first study because I believe in the first one I said that the, the first, the middle and the last column represents a three and it, and it brings a six when, you, when, when each of those columns represent a three, but it's, it's not actually that. We're going to have a look at some more diagrams today to really get that identification going. So, when we are looking at this barcode and why everything leads up to that, because remember that when we looked at um, last week, we said that, you know, we talked a little bit about money. We're going to look at some of, a bit about money again today so I can explain that other part as well and how all this leads into it. Because I didn't really sort of touch on that last part. There's two main things we need to touch on. So, we saw that, you know, there's a character behind this, you know, type of character. But at the same time, there's a, what's driving the technology and everything that's pulling towards that center point, which the Bible speaks to us, is actually uh, the microchip, which uses many different types of technology, but that technology means driven in the background by money, because the things don't move without money. People don't work without being paid and all that sort of thing, right? So therefore, let's go to when we see in your Bible, I want to just point something out. Let's go back for a moment to verse 17. When we were looking at, you see how we read and it said, and that no man might buy or sell. So keep that in mind. This is where the end result, this is where it's going. That people will not be able to buy or sell, save or accept that that person has the mark. Now this particular word, mark, remember the New Testament, the 27 books of the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation were written in Koine Greek, in the Koine Greek language. So this particular word, Mark, okay, in the Greek language, let's go to the next slide, which is slide, uh, the one after the, the Mark of the Beast, that one right there, thank you. I don't know if you can see it there, but anybody who does a little bit further studies to try and learn the actual words, when we look at, because what we're looking at today is just the English interpretation, but remember it was originally written in Greek in the Koine Greek language. So therefore, when somebody can look up a Strong's Dictionary, which basically is a dictionary for the Bible to explain the actual words and get those words which are actually in the Greek language, we actually find, you can see there, I don't know if you can see it, but it says Rev 13, 17, which is the second last paragraph, which is in an orange. Well, 
when it says mark, it's got a number next to it because that's how they, they identify um, the Greek word to it. So the Greek word mark is actually a Greek word on the right hand side. It's called uh, karagma or charagma, karagma. So this particular Greek word, we see there that it also gives a description because in the Greek language, brethren, there is, you know, sometimes one word can have multiple different meanings. And sometimes that is where different Bible interpretations can go off track because they'll give it a completely different meaning. So when we give it the meaning that it actually is or it needs to be or the one that it actually is, then we can find out what it's actually talking about. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. And on that next slide, we basically look up that number, which is another number there, which says G5842, which takes us to another form of that same word, which is charax in the, in, the, in the Greek. And that charax, when we look at the description, it gives us a bit more of a description to describe the word mark. What is it talking about, mark? So when we look at that, it says to sharpen to a point, akin to... Uh, to, to uh, it, it says, akin to, through the idea of scratching, a stake that is, by implication, a palisade uh, or rampart, military mound. So it's giving you a description. With those words, are you getting, are you getting some sort of image in your mind? So we're, we're talking about maybe sharp, something that scratches, something that's got something. It's sort of what we're getting in our mind by these words, okay? Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, in the next slide, this particular slide here, because it takes you to another word as well, which is grafo. And grafo pretty much means to grave, like engrave something, especially to write figuratively, to describe, describe, write, writing, written. Okay, so all of those words are trying to describe this word, mark. Okay, don't get too worked up in that, because this is just some explanations to give a description of mark but that's not the main point of it but if you're thinking about maybe a steak not 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 beef steak but like you know like a stick steak or if you're thinking about something sharp something that you can scratch with something that you can mark all right and it's got here something written as well so now I'm thinking okay maybe it's just some sort of stick some sort of pointy thing but at the same time it might be something that's got to do with uh, uh, you know something written on it Okay, so that's some thoughts that bring some images with those words. All right, now, one more. Let's go to a different dictionary called, because that's the Strong's Dictionary. If we go to the Thayer's Dictionary, the Thayer's Dictionary, when it looks up the word charagma, which is the same for mark, it gives you a bit of a description. Look at that, it says, a stamp, an imprinted mark of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist. Now this one's actually giving you a different sort of description, but it also says the mark branded upon horses, thin card, sculpture, graven work of idolatrous, idolatrous images. Okay, so that's the descriptions that we have in different dictionaries. Um, and just so I don't bore you, we'll, we'll leave it there. Alright, so you've got some images in your mind, more or less, with these words that we mentioned. But the key word here is mark, because that's what we're trying to describe. What sort of mark is it talking about? Now, let's go to the next image. What's that? Does that look like a picket fence? That's a picket fence. So these words pretty much are describing what John actually saw. And John is actually seeing something. Now, I'm not going to say it was a picket fence, but he's actually seeing something that's got sharpness to it, lines, and has numbers. Because you've got to remember, technology wasn't the same back then as what it is now. Computers didn't exist back then. So he's just trying to describe it, and he described it as a mark. But when we look at what a mark is, we got all these words to try and describe the type of uh, what a mark is, or what would categorize a mark. So, looking at that in the definition, let's go now to this next image. With the barcodes, 
There's not just one barcode, there's many different types of barcodes. There's barcodes for what you buy and what you sell. That's the most common one. But there's barcodes for packages. There's barcodes for tracking. Australia Post uses barcodes which are different to the barcodes that you'll find in the shopping centres. Have you noticed that? There's, there's long, thin ones. There's square ones. There's the new QR code that wherever you're going, that's a different type of barcode. But yet, it's a barcode. So we've got here different types. We've got a maxi code, QR code, one code, Australia Post. And look, that one, I, even, I was even wowed about that one, Royal Mail. <laughs> There's even a Royal Mail barcode one. But there's all those types, and I'm sure you've seen them. You know, sometimes you get those big packages of boxes that you can get, you know, a parcel that comes to your house, and you've got a long one, but it doesn't look like the one when you're purchasing something at a store, you know, when you're purchasing food or items. It looks different. So it's just to give you an idea, the most common one is the one that's up there. You see the one that says, EAN13, that's the most common one that is used as well as the UPCA, the one that's next to it over there, the UPC code. The UPC one is, is very popular, it's pretty much the very first one that came out in the United States. Because this technology was created, invented by somebody. Alright, so it has an inventor, but no, you can't track him down because he's dead already. He passed away. So now that we've identified that there's different barcodes, remember the verse that we read, because these different barcodes, they're not all for what you buy and sell. Some are for tracking, some are for parcels, some are for different things, you know, different items, different purposes. But the Bible actually tells us, when we saw in verse 17, it actually narrows it down and it says, it's, you won't be able to buy or sell. Get that? So, out of all these possibilities and whatever other possibilities there could be, it narrows it down in the Bible and it says it goes down to what you can buy or sell. So, it brings it down for us, really narrows it down. And when we're looking at it, that it narrows it down, let's look at the next image because we then have to go to the type of barcode where we buy or sell. And when we buy or sell, this is the type of, maybe not that number, you won't see that number on it, but you will see a system that is a barcode like that. So, if you want to have a quick look at it, as I keep explaining, because it's just so you can get familiar with it, and what you will notice is that it's, it's broken into two parts. You've got the left part and you've got the right part. Now, the left part usually has the manufacturer code, which pretty much is to identify the brand name, whether it's Kellogg's, whether it's, um, what are some other brand names? Colgate, whether it's the Captain, uh, the Captain Biscuits that, that, that are there, you know, it's got a brand name. So the number that's on the left is the manufacturer code, which identifies it to that business. But then, on the right-hand side, it's got the actual product code. So if that business has two different products, it'll have one product code for one of those products, and another product code for another one of those products. Because when we look at a barcode, you see these numbers on the left-hand side, the ones that you're seeing on the products, is just for your human eye, so that we can know and identify it quickly. But each of those numbers, are tied up to those lines and those lines depending on the number will be thicker will be thinner will be more separated or will be more together and we're going to have a look at exactly how they make up those numbers so we can truly understand that and that's why then you'll be able to understand that the numbers below identify those numbers so that the lines is for the computer to read but the numbers below is when we see it with our eyes, it's so that the person can quickly identify what the number is. Yeah? Make sense? But when you're looking at the barcodes, you will notice that the barcodes are separated by three, what's called three guard bars. Okay? And those three guard bars is basically the first two lines, which usually sometimes are longer than all the rest. And then you've got the middle two ones, which are also longer, but they're identical. And then you've got the other ones, well, almost identical. And then you've got the other two, which are also... Um, so you've got the, the starting one, then you've got the information, then you've got the guard, which is stop, and then you've got the second number, then you've got the stop, and then you've got the other part on, the, on, on this side and that side. Okay? 
So the important thing that we need to sort of look at is these three guard bars. Okay, that's what I'm going to explain here tonight. Now, when we're looking at, okay, so how do we then know how to count these things? Like, they're just lines to us, you know? We, we can't sort of make out what's one, two, three, four, or five. And that's, that's fine. That's because, you know, that's the computer's job. The computer does that. Now, if you remember, for, for those of you who, who went back to the, you know, information technology days, and then they said infotech, and then they called it IT. So when we were doing our, you know, basic sort of computer learning about things, we learned that computers aren't that complicated in the sense of how they read things. They'll actually just read something as one or zero. And so it uses a binary code of about seven digits, and depending on whether it's one or zero, one or zero, it'll give it a number. And that's how it reads. Okay, so let's have a look at the next slide, or next uh, image, please, because now we're going to get into the technical part of it, which is not that difficult to, to read, but when we're looking at, you know, the, the, the this is, the, we, we looked at the anatomy of the barcode before, the screen that we had before, but in this particular section, this is where the system that was created was created so that the computer can read the ones and the zeros and work out what number it is. So, when we're looking at this particular screen, you'll see that the top numbers, you've got zero to nine, they call that the left side, the odd parity codes. Why do they call it the odd parity codes? Is because you'll notice that the black numbers, now the black lines represent a one. The white lines represent a zero, because remember the computer can only read the ones and zeros. And all of those ones and zeros jumbled up will give it an actual number. And so it's in a combination of seven, alright? So therefore what you've got is the first one, zero. On the left side you've got three white lines, then you've got two black ones, one white one in, the, in between, and then you've got the black one on the left. So you've got three black lines and you've got four white lines, yeah? But in the binary code, it reads it there as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Make sense? Yeah. So the ones represent the black, that it reads the black ones as one, and then the white ones it represents it as a zero. Okay, so that's how it reads it, and it says, oh, this is zero. Because that's how it's been programmed. Make sense? Okay, so, when we're looking at that, they call all of those top ones 0 to 9 on the left-hand side, which is the top one, represents the left side odd parity, is because when you're looking at the black lines, you will not see on the top row any of those black lines. You won't see just two black lines, you won't see just four black lines. You're, you're going to see either three or five black lines. See that? Making sense? The ones on the bottom, which are called right side, they call it the even parity because it's got even numbers. The black lines, you will not have a three, you will not have a five of the black lines. You will have either two black lines or you will have four black lines in different combinations, but either two or four. And that's why they call it the right side even parity numbers, whereas the left side is odd parity numbers, okay? So therefore, and it's not, it's not that difficult, the system, because it's just in reverse. The top one and the bottom one, they're just in reverse. Did you notice, um, let's just say, for example, the zero up there, you've got white, 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 black, black, white, black. On the, on the left side, on the right side here, the bottom one, for a zero, you've got black, 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 white, white, black, white. See? So it's a very syst uh, easy system that's created. And this was like a, a computer engineer or technician, whatever it's called, who invented it. They paid him to create this system so that they can track, you know, um, uh, everything that is a product, you know, so they can track things. So they paid this person his money, you know, he did the job, just like anybody doing a job. So, how does this add up? Now, I want you to notice something. You see, the right side even parity specifically coming down to the number six. That one is identified as black line, one, white line, 
black line and then white, 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 white to make it up, yeah? When we actually now go, now just picture some of those, but let's go back to the previous image, the anatomy of the barcode. You see this first one, the first guard bar, you've got black line, one white one in the middle, and a black line. Can you see that? That is an actual six, but then you'll say, well, what about all that white over there? Oh, but, you know, it says number one. And this is the left side, the left side odd number parity. Let's have a look at the other image. So we're number one. Let's go get that number one. So we're getting number one from the left side parity, because remember that anything that's in the middle on the left, from the left is your left side odd parity numbers, and on the right is your right side even parity numbers. So when we look at the left side, number one, you've got two white bars, then you've got black, black, white, white, black. You see the one I'm talking about? Up there, number one, on the left side parity, it says 0011001. Zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. It's got white, white, black, black, white, white, black. Let's go back. So therefore, sorry, uh, back to the, yeah. So therefore, the white line is going to be thicker. The black line is going to be thicker because it was white, white, black, black. And what was the other one? Sorry, it was, uh, let's go back to it, sorry. So it's white, white, black, black, white, white, black. So therefore, see, it's, it's, it's going to be thicker. The white lines will be thicker. The black lines will be thicker than this one. Because this one here, it's got black, white, black, and then it's got those, all those white lines, so it's going to have a thicker whiteness after it, but yet the two black ones will be always the same. And now when we go back, this is the same way that you can then identify the thickness and you can understand why it's got thicker ones, because if it's got four black ones, then it's going to be a thick one, thick black one. If it's got four white ones, then it'll have a, a long white thickness and then maybe one thin black one, and that is how then the numbers are identified. That is the anatomy of it, that is how to find it, that is how it calculates it. So, we said the three guard bars, you've got a six, you've got a six, and you've got a six, right there. So, you don't actually see the numbers, but it actually has from the six. Now, if we go back to the one that's got the, 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 the black bars all over the place, the, the one that's got the, that one, thank you. What you'll notice is, this was invented by somebody. So the person who invented it could have used any other number to use as a guard bar. But yet they didn't use any of the other numbers. They went for the right side, par even parity code, number six. And what does the Bible tell us? Where they're going to put the mark of the beast? Uh, the right side. It also says the forehead. But it does mention the right hand is where they'll put it. And you could say, oh, but it's just coincidence. But that's the thing. One coincidence after another coincidence after another coincidence doesn't become a coincidence anymore. Because you've got to remember that the Bible will always be fulfilled how God has said. And He has given understanding, wisdom to His children so that we can understand the Word because God is God. And everything will be fulfilled how He has said. Now, this isn't everything. When we go back to the other image, um, for example, and, and we saw that it's when you buy or when you sell. So that's another, another point right there. You know, if we're going to say, well, the Bible says it's going to be narrowed down to when you buy, when you sell. Let's go back to where all the, all the different, all the different uh, type of um, barcodes were. You know, none of those other ones are really when you buy and when you sell. And if they were, they don't have that sort of system on there. But the ones when, when you purchase, when you buy and when you sell, it does have that sort of system there. And that is why we've got three things already going in the favor of what God said. God says that there will be a mark. We saw those words that pretty much are identifying what, what, what John is seeing. John is seeing that there's these lines and there, there's these uh, you know, numbers going on. 
But at the same time, it also says to us, no one will be able to buy or sell. They invented the barcode systems, and all out of all the barcode systems, the one that adds up is the one that buys and sells. And then on top of that, you've got the three guard bars, which add up to 666. So, you know, coincidence after coincidence after coincidence. You want another coincidence? Let's meet, let's meet the developer. We're going to have to go uh, a, few, a few forward. Let's just get forward for a bit. Uh, this one, yes. The actual name, this is the developer of that technology. He's passed away now. But his name is... George Joseph Lohrer. Here's another coincidence. Each of those names, it's six letters in each of those names. George is six letters, Joseph is six letters, and Lohrer is six letters. Is that coincidence? Yeah, could be. But one coincidence after the other after the other is uh, that's a big coincidence, yeah? <laughs> so when we're looking at all of this, brethren, we're seeing that this identifying system will be inbuilt into what is the mark of the beast, into what is that tracking system that we've been looking at. And all of this has to do with it. Now, these, these men, you know, they may know, you know, I can't say whether they knew or whether they didn't know, but everybody fulfills prophecy in this life. Whether we fulfill prophecy for the side of the glory of God in the case that we are Christians, or whether we fulfill it for the other side, for the condemnation side, for the side that, you know, works towards the favor of, of, of bringing about the, the enemy's plans to fruition, either way, God's word will be fulfilled. And I just can't understand why there's a lot of people who, who, who don't even want to believe in the Bible and they don't, they don't want to believe that, that God is real. But yet, when we're seeing that a book that was written, you know, over 2,000 years ago, and it's spot on, and this is just one example out of many things in history, that it's so many things that have come to pass, and things that are in motion that will come to pass, that it will give you right on the dot where God said, that's how it'll happen. Because even the devil has to submit to the Word of God. Did you know that? Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. We have a big God, brethren. A massively big, precious Lord. So, now you saw the you saw the, the the barcode. So you got familiar with it. So you know that that's when you go to the shops, you're going to see it all. When you when you match up the products, you'll see that they're all the same. So you can ask the question and say, well, then how do they know if I've purchased two or three? That's a different sort of system because you know they they have you ever had that when you when you have like twenty things of the same product and they go instead of scanning them one by one. The cashier, the, the person who's at the cashier goes, oh, look, instead of scanning, well, how much do you have? 20. So they just put in the number, 20, and they scan one, and all of them are already there. So that's an internal system that they have inside, which is pretty much for them to track how much their products were sold. But this tracking system is not really that complex, the one that was designed. But this is just so that you can identify that part and understand it, because that's the important thing. When you understand it, you can explain it to somebody else, you know, instead of people going, yeah, but, you know, who knows, and who can, you know, believe in, the, in something that was written so long, you know, all the errors and mistakes, but, you know, God's word will be fulfilled. Praise be the name of the Lord. So now, let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, because now I want to talk about a bit of something else, which has to do with this. He says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. We saw that last week, yeah? Where it said, for it is the number of a man. And surprisingly, we saw two names last week. And it's not just the only names. There's names all over the place in history that have served the purpose of the other one. But yet, prophecy is being fulfilled. You know, we saw there that the name of that person, without even having to count things, even in his name, an English name, you know, he had... Um, what was his name again? You know, the name of the developer of this of this whole thing. It was um, George Joseph Lohr. You know, coincidences? I don't think so. God doesn't have coincidences. God goes straight to the point because He's in charge of everything. So therefore, in the end, brethren, when we look at Revelation chapter thirteen, verse eighteen, it then says, "It is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred." Three score and six. Now, God could have directed 
the Apostle John to write a different number. But it was this number that he would use so that throughout time we could know, we could identify it. You know, so over there we looked at who was recognized as that number. It was that particular man at that time which was recognized as Nero Caesar. But there was something about his character, something about, you know, who he was. And it's not that he just finished right there. It's something that he had within his spirit that is still, that Antichrist spirit is still, you know, continuing until the whole prophecy of that part is fulfilled in its fullness and we know that even though that antichrist spirit there are many antichrist people with, with, with the antichrist spirit but there will be that one particular government who fulfills all of these things who uses all of these technologies who makes this decision he tries to put it on people he forces it on people and to the point where he says well if the people don't want to put it on they'll be tortured and killed like terrorists so that's where it's going, because that's what the Bible says. It says to us in, in earlier verses that he who doesn't want to put on the mark, he's going to cause them to be killed. That's what the Bible says. So we know the intention. God has told us where the end point is. Now, when we look at that, let's go to the next image, which we saw that all of that um, adds up to Nero. We saw that Nero's name was you know, as the 666, when we look at the next image, we see that this name also has uh, six letters in each of his name, and all of this has to do, I mean, he was the inventor of the barcode message system. Praise be the name of the Lord. So, I'm going to leave that part there. Let's just go to that image of the mark of the beast. So, I hope that this is clear now, in the sense of explaining the barcode system. Because last week we also touched on the part about the money, and I'm going to talk about that today as well. The biblical verses of what God has said to us ever since the beginning, He has said in Exodus chapter 20 verse 17, He said, Thou shalt not covet, covet is like want, covet is like saying, well it says there, you shall not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his well, that ass, which is like a donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So the whole reason why he's saying that it's not permitted for us to covet things is so that we do not fall in love with those things. Like I was saying last time, there's people that fall in love with money, with possessions. You know, if, if they don't have possessions, they, 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 they've become materialistic people. That they need to have the latest car, they need to have the latest iPhone, they need to have the latest watch. They, it's just something that, you know, continues to, it's like a fashion sort of thing. And this is something that drives that person, but it, it's covetousness because they don't stop there. It's, it's almost like, I've got to get the latest thing. I've got to get the best one. Oh, this person has this, so I want to get something better. So that thing is never satisfied. It's a, it's a desire of the flesh, really, what it is what it is. So that's why God warned and said, thou shalt not covet, because coveting is actually a sin. If we go to the next biblical verse, the next biblical verse uh, shows us, it says, O oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So God brings us to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. He brings us right. And why does he mention that? Because you see, it even says, O oh, no man anything. But yet the system that we are living in is something that just basically says to you, don't wait till tomorrow, get it now. And it tries to drive that part in us to keep us enslaved in always being in debt instead of coming to be free from debt. And all of this that we saw in that video, the whole point of it is because the whole system of the money is built upon a lie. It's a form of legalized theft so that the, the certain people can take benefits of it, but everybody else has to pay the price. Does that make sense? So I don't think that, uh, you know, we've probably talked about anything that's outside of the word, but it was necessary for me to actually mention that part to you because this is the system that we are living in. It's a system that's basically designed on spend more, spend more, spend more. We are in debt. 
if we try to you know, clear the debt, if we try and fix it up, the whole system will come crashing down anyway. So what's actually sustaining the system is that people remain in debt. And that number just continues to grow and grow. So in the end, what is going to happen? In the end, we all know that the system, economic system, will end up having its time that it will collapse. And that is why we're seeing that everything is being pushed into a new system, a digital system, changing it all. You know, the whole Bitcoin thing and everything else that's coming out, which is completely different now, because everything is coming into measures, because it's all pointing to, you know, when the Antichrist comes into full reign, full power, but at the same time, it's coming to the mark of the beast, and at the same time, that's why there's a system that is going to be controlled even more. Because previously, you know, before, before it was all in the banks, everybody used to, you know, and sometimes they still do it as now with the cash. You know, they, they sell something and they go, oh, look, if you give me cash, they don't give you a receipt, but you can get it for cheaper with cash. And that's because they're not actually claiming it. You know, they're not charging you tax, so they're giving it to you cheaper and they're not doing the right thing. They're not doing the right thing. But at the same time, it's another form of theft. And so therefore, the, the governments are trying to control all of that, make everything digital, because when everything is digital, all transactions are there and they can't hide how much it was, because it, was, it will tell you. So therefore, they have to include the tax. Therefore, the government will get his cut. So that is why all of this is coming there, but it's all got that main point. But yet, the whole system was created in a lie, in a deception. And this is the system that we live in. That's why I told you sometimes that, you know, it feels almost like, well, what's the point then? Well, the point is that Jesus said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. When they asked Jesus Christ, Jesus, should we pay taxes onto Caesar? Jesus, he said, you know, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Because we are, as Christians, told to abide by the laws of, of the land. But at the same time, give to God what is of God's. And God is telling us, don't fall in love with the money, because the whole system is a lie. And when we looked at what people do for money, it's crazy. I mean, people kill, step over people for money. They do all sorts of wicked things. And, and the Bible even said to us, when we look at the next verse, I think it's there, First Timothy 1, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Because what, people sell drugs because they want to make money. People get into prostitution because they, they, they want to make money. Or people get people, traffic people and sell them because of the money. So money is the root, the love of money. So it's not money, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. Because it changes people, it causes people to become something else, to step all over people, to kill people, to do all sorts of wicked things. And it also says there, it's a warning for Christians, it says, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Because there's been many people that in this path they've wanted to maintain riches of life, but at the same time be a Christian. But it, it just can't happen because we can't have two masters. We can't love money and love God. It's all got to be God or, or, you know. So that's why we come across decisions in life that appear like we're losing, but we're not losing because we're winning with God. Because in the end, this whole system is, being, is based on a lie anyway. Which is going to crash in the end anyway. So the best thing is to be right with God, to love God, and God will look after us in the middle of all of this. Because God already knows that the whole system is built on a line, it's going to collapse anyway. Because it's all designed that way in the end. Because remember, the Bible also says that the devil, Satan, may the Lord rebuke him, is the God with the little g, small g, not, a, not the big g, small g, because he's not the God, but he's the God of this world. As long as God permits until his time comes where he will be cast into the lake of fire. But he's the one that's in the background. I mean, he did it to Jesus. He was saying to Jesus, he goes, if you bow, if you bow before me, look at all the nations, look at all the kingdoms. I will give you all of this if you but bow before me. And he showed him in a second, he showed him all the kingdoms, all the riches and everything, the systems. So these systems that are built on lies, who's the father of the lies? The devil. So therefore, God gives us wisdom. God gives us understanding. He doesn't tell us, okay, well, you know, leave that system. We are in that system, whether we like it or not, because that is the system by law. But yet we abide by everything that's lawful, but we don't cross the line. That's what God wants us to know. We don't cross that line. 
If others want to do it, it's up to them. But we earn what we, what we have, we work for it, we do it all in, in the legal ways, but at the same time, let us not cross that road where we start to love money because that is the root of all evil.